Now, I'm just thinking about with the Knicks. Now, my understanding is that Chauncey Billups will probably they'll they'll use the amnesty clause for Chauncey Billups and maybe go after Baron Davis. I'm interested to see your thoughts about that. Do you do you see an upgrade if that were to happen, or how do you how do you see that benefiting the Knicks, if any? Well, you know, I think Chauncey Billups would be a better fit on the Knicks team than a guy like Baron Davis would be. I think Chauncey is more of a pass first. He's going to play defense. You know, Baron Davis more of a scoring guard, and that's really the last thing that the Knicks need at this point is another score with all the guys that they have. You know, but you know, in order for them to get Baron Davis, Cleveland has to decide if they're going to use the amnesty clause on Baron Davis, and you know that remains to be seen if that's going to happen. So, you know, at some point the Knicks are going to have to address the point guard situation because it doesn't look like Chauncey Billups will be back. And right now you have Tony Douglas, who's a solid backup, but, you know, he's more of a combo guard, not really a pure point guard. And then you have the rookie, Iman Shumpert, and I'm not so sure he's just going to turn the team over to an unproven rookie. So, you know, the, the Knicks are going to have to, you know, once they sign Tyson Chandler, and I'm sure they're doing it as we speak, they're probably, you know, searching for a point guard either through a trade, through a free agent signing, or the amnesty clause, like you said, and try to get a guy like Brian Davis. Do you think they're still going to bring in Grant Hill, who could sort of be, I mean, he's older, but like almost like a point forward for us? What do you think about that? Yeah, you know, that's, you know, that, that's not a, uh, a terrible idea. You know, I just, I don't really see how he fits, though. You know, he's he's obviously a slasher, and, you know, Carmelo's going to be down in the low blocks. I, you know, I just, just don't understand, you know, Grant Hill at his age, to me, it doesn't seem to me too much sense for the Knicks. I don't buy this idea. I like your idea. If you want to make him a point forward, that's one thing. But, you know, when people are saying he's going to be the shooting guard, I don't No, definitely don't not a shooting guard. He's, he's never been a great outside shooter, and I, I just don't see that. And the Sean Williams situation? Well, he wants to be back. It seems like the Knicks want him back, but they kind of want to, they want to figure out their roster first before they bring him in. But, you know, Sean is looking for more than a one-year minimum contract, and as of right now, that's all the Knicks are willing to offer. And, you know, I, I kind of feel badly for Sean because I think he, you know, I think he did the right thing last year. He came in, he played well, he was on his best behavior. I thought he was a real valuable asset to the team in every way imaginable. And you would like to see a guy like that get rewarded. You know, he's not looking to break the bank and, you know, be earning uh, even $5 million a year, but I kind of think he... Uh, deserves a little bit more than the minimum, and I think he should look for a deal right where he gets more than the minimum because he finally had a bounce back year, and he might as well, you know, let it let it pay off for him somehow. You're looking at the lockout situation. We're playing a shorter season, 66 games, a lot of teams playing in back to back to backs. When you look at the NBA schedule, can can you say, okay, this schedule based on teams and how they're getting better, who do you think benefits in this whole situation going forward based on the the, the, the rosters and everything and how the schedule is laid out? You know what? I, I would think the teams that have kind of been together for a while, you know, I think a team like the Miami Heat, you know, those three guys have been together now for a year and they know the system. Same thing with teams like the Dallas Mavericks. You know, but then I think, you know, if you look around the NBA, there's going to be a couple of players on every team where I think the lockout is going to hurt. And I think it's going to hurt, uh, you know, the lockout short season is going to hurt. And I think if you look at a guy like Kobe Bryant, I think to some degree it's going to hurt him. I think to some degree it's going to hurt Tim Duncan. And I think it's, unfortunately for the Knicks, I think it's going to hurt Amari Stoudemire. I think 66 games playing, all, you, know, so, you know, a lot of four games and five nights, back to back. It's just too many games for his body. And, you know, the condition of his body, his knees, he's just not built right now to play that many games. And I think they're going to have to – I think there's going to be moments during the season where they'll, where they'll keep him out of the game. Remember, he didn't practice a lot at the end of last season because, you know, the Knicks were looking to preserve his body. But it's hard you – know, he wasn't practicing, but he was playing in games. This year there's not going to be a lot of practice time anyway, but you're going to be playing games. So I think every team in the league will have an issue with playing – you know, four games in five nights, three games in three nights. And, you know, for the Knicks, I think it's going to be, I, think, I think for two guys it was going to be tough. It was going to be tough for Amari and Chauncey Phillips, but now it's not going to be an issue for Phillips because he's not on the team anymore. 
but it's obviously going to be an issue for Amari. How far do you think this year our Nick team will go? What's your what's your, well, your prediction based on what you're seeing and what you anticipate? Well, it's that funny. It's, it's funny that you say that because you, know, you talk about the Heat and everyone thinks that they had a disappointing season, and then people talk about all oh, the Knicks had this great, you know, surge year last year. Well, they didn't win a playoff game, and I still think you know the kind of steps you have to take as a team. I think if the Knicks you know, aren't in the top four in the East, I think that would be a bit of a disappointment. If they don't finish either first, second, or third, first, second, third, or fourth in the East, that's a disappointment. I think if they don't get to the second round, it's a disappointment. You know, there's a lot of money invested in the team. You know, they, they have, you know, a proven star in Carmelo, Amar, a terrific role player in Tyson Chandler, who they should have tom- uh, tomorrow. I think the Knicks better be a second-round team, or else I, I don't think it's a successful season if they're not.